Hey guys, I have here my JBL Pulse 2 and this Bluetooth speaker is a little bit older so the battery failed now uh, so we want to replace this today and I'm going to show you how to do this because this is quite a task, it's a little bit tricky. So we start out by removing these rubber rings here on the sides by the passive radiators and those are glued into position so uh, I'm going to use a heat gun to uh, warm the glue behind that up a little bit. Uh, before I do that though, I'm going to stuff here a little bit of aluminum foil in there so I can protect the uh, passive radiator from the heat. So you see here I'm going to go around the uh, outside perimeter here of the rubber rings with my heat gun. So I'm going to slowly warm up the glue a little bit. Then at some point we can start trying to pry the uh, rubber rings loose. Uh, so I'm going to use here a little uh, pocket knife and I'm going to kind of sliding this uh, in there and then you have to kind of go down. So slide in a little bit and then dig down and eventually you're going to be able to uh, pry the rubber rings loose. You have to be careful so you don't t accidentally tear the uh, rubber. So uh, carefully work your way around. So this takes uh, quite a while. It took me maybe five to ten minutes. Uh, just trying to pry this loose. So when we do this on uh, both sides of the speaker, of course. Yeah, so really try to not tear these apart because we want to put them back uh, later on. So this is how that looks like with the ring removed. And underneath there you find here four screws. So we're going to loosen those. One word of advice, really make sure you remember which screws go where. You don't want to mix them up because there's a lot of different sizes here you're going to find. So make sure you have them in order and organized. Okay, so now we can take off these caps here, just easily pulling them off. And underneath there, there's a couple more screws on both sides. So we're removing those. And now we have, we have loosened up this entire piece here. I see the, these rings on the side and then they are going over the button panel here. So just remember here this button panel that's also glued into position. So I'm going to use my heat gun here once one more time to loosen up the glue a little bit to make it a little bit softer so that I can relatively easily now remove here this entire piece without tearing it. See here how this peels off and you can also see here the uh, the white glue that's in position there. Okay, so once we've done that, now again we do have a couple more screws here and again remember which screws you take out of where. So there's I think two or three different types of screws here and just what we're going to remove right now. So two, two on the left side and uh, by the right by the charging port is uh, two more different sized screws and then a couple of screws here that hold this this black panel in position uh, which now I'm going to also remove. Um, be really careful when you do this start from the left side here by the charging port and work your way over to the right side and once you get it loose don't just rip it off there is a really uh, fragile um, ribbon cable on the right side that uh, connects it to the camera and then underneath there we find this uh, board this, um, daughter board here with the buttons and which also is connected with this ribbon, ca ribbon cable. So in order to release the ribbon cable just pull on this little gray tab here, just pull it back that releases the cable, you can just easily pull it out. Now in order to uh, remove the cable off the camera that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, first you have to look closely and remove all this glue here that's in there. There's some hot glue. So I'm just going to peel this off and uh, I'm going to be really careful because I don't want to damage the cable or the camera. So I'm really making sure that all the glue is gone. And then I can just take out the camera. That's really easy as soon as the glue is gone. And then also here we have this little gray tab that we pull back and then we can release the camera. Okay, so next we find two more screws here. And as soon as we release those then uh, the outer shell of the speaker is going to be it's going to loosen up quite a bit so you know because right now it's everything is still firm but now as soon as you release these two screws now you can uh, move the core and that means we have to be really careful now with the ribbon cables that are still sticking out through the outer shell so uh, what i'm going to do is push the uh, ribbon cables here a little bit to the right so uh, and then i'm going to push the inner core towards the left. So I'm going to push it out and then the uh, I'm making sure that the ribbon cables uh, are not getting bent. 
and uh, slowly get pulled through the hole. And then we have here now the core and we can uh, put the uh, shell to the side. Now of course there's more screws here, two more screws for the next white cover here. And all around the speaker here we see now these uh, foam pads and underneath are the LEDs that are responsible here for the illumination. And we do need to remove the first uh, row here on both sides of this uh, plastic cover. And, uh, so underneath there uh, are some couple of clips that we need to get to. So I'm carefully uh, detaching here the foam from the cover here. You see this? I'm just removing here it on the edge. I'm actually leaving it sticking on the uh, small boards here where the LEDs are soldered onto. So as soon as I uh, remove this, then we see here the uh, boards. So uh, those are also glued on. There's no screws, it's just glue. And I'm going to carefully pry these boards loose. So as I said before, um, we just need to remove the very first boards here, right next to the uh, plastic cover. So uh, take your time. Um, it took me probably five minutes to do this in total. But you see here, I'm carefully now prying this loose. So now we can take a look on the side of that plastic cover and we can see here immediately those three plastic tabs. We have to loosen those and then of course here on the opposite side it uh, looks exactly the same. So I'm going to repeat that there as well. Now loosening these tabs here should be really easy but it's actually a little bit tricky because the uh, cover here also is glued uh, on a couple of spots here. So on the both ends here on the right side and on the left side there's some glue. So uh, we also have to pry in between here and then carefully remove the glue. Uh, when you do this of course here you have to still make sure you don't damage the uh, ribbon cables. See this here? Uh, slowly opens up and then on the uh, opposite side where the uh, charging port is it's the same thing. There's some glue in there so you want to carefully pry that open. And now we do have access here to the battery, uh, it, but we cannot quite remove it yet because the uh, wires are still connected to the uh, board here, the motherboard inside. So we need to remove the uh, passive radiator on the right side here. And this is glued on, so uh, carefully peel it off, try not to uh, destroy it or tear it. And then uh, it's really easy actually, it's not that bad. There's just some uh, little bit of glue here, which I'm actually going to remove because we have to uh, glue this back on later. So we want to make sure this is really nice and clean. And also before we can remove the battery, we have here this black goop here, this putty between the battery and the uh, ribbon cable. So I'm going to carefully cut that loose. So now we can technically almost take it out. We just have to, to take care of the cables here. So those go through that little hole and come out back here. You see here where this uh, cable, these cables go along around and then have the connector here. So we're going to first release the connector. We're going to pull this out a little bit and then we have a whole bunch of hot glue uh, that's holding the uh, wires in place and also seals up the, the hot glue seals the uh, hole to the outside that has some uh, acoustical reasons. Uh, so that your passive radiator can work nicely. So I'm going to again use my hot gun, my uh, hot air gun here, and I'm going to loosen up, liquefying the uh, glue a little bit, and then I'm scraping it out, and then uh, I'm doing this over and over again. So I'm warming up the glue and then scraping a little bit out uh, until I eventually am able to uh, pull out the cable here. You will notice that I already removed the connector to the battery. So the connector does not fit through the tiny hole. So I just pulled, took that off and uh, I put some tape over the uh, ends of the battery so that I don't accidentally shorten it. That would be really bad. Now here we see how tiny that hole is where the wires go through. And uh, also here from the inside, I'm going to keep cleaning up and removing some more of that hot glue so that we have some more space for the new wires to go through. Now here I have now my replacement battery and I was caught a little bit by surprise because the new battery is a little bit longer than the original one and I wasn't able to fit it in. So what I did was I thought it was a mistake and I ordered a replacement, like a new one, and it happened to have exactly the same size. So uh, 
somehow this doesn't want to fit so I'm ended up cutting out this little plastic end here this uh, spacer here so I'm just making a little cut there and I'm taking some pliers and pulling this off so that way I was able to fit it in there and it's really tight so uh, when you when you have the same problem make sure you don't squeeze or squish the battery so that would be really dangerous if you do that the battery may actually catch fire so make sure not to use too much force when uh, inserting this battery here okay so now i have this in there also make note of the position of the wires so how that is squeezed in behind the uh, plastic that's important that you do that otherwise you won't be able to put the cover back on so now I have the uh, wires that need to go through here. So I'm, I'm using here some tweezers to remove the first cable here. And uh, including the connector that is here. You see this metal piece at the end. And I'm pushing the first one through. And now I'm actually using the old connector from the old battery. And I'm going to plug that in there so that I make sure that I have the uh, correct order of the wires and I don't accidentally mix those up. Also make sure you put the uh, plug in here the right way see this little tab on the top that is supposed to go in like this here so otherwise the uh, wire would really easily come out again so I'm going to repeat that with the rest of the four cables and once I'm done I'm uh, plugging the connector back into the board and now it's a good time to run a first test so I'm connecting the keyboard with the ribbon cable and I'm just powering up the speaker, you see everything works nicely, powers up right away. And also when I try to charge it, we can see here the, the uh, charging LEDs on the bottom of the uh, board here that they light up. Okay, so now I'm going to plug the hole again here with some hot glue so that the uh, air cannot escape through there. I'm going to do that from both sides. And I'm also adding uh, some more glue here to hold the wires in place so that they don't go anywhere. They stay put and also a little bit here on the connector so that the connector doesn't accidentally get loose in the future. Okay, so then uh, I'm installing the passive radiator again and I'm using here some uh, silicone and I'm going to glue, put that on there so that it glues the uh, passive radiator nicely to the uh, housing. Uh, look out for the correct orientation here. See this little tab on the passive radiator that's uh, supposed to line up with that little hole here on the housing. And I'm just pushing this on here, pressing this on a little bit and now I'm letting it dry for a while. Okay, so then uh, it's time to put the cover back on here. So first thing I do is push the, the ribbon cables through there making sure that they're all the way out and then you line up the charging port and the auxiliary port on the right side and then you can just uh, pretty much press it on check that all the tabs here on the sides are all snapping in position I'm using a little bit of scotch tape to help me push the uh, core of the speaker here through the sleeve uh, so that the ribbon cables don't get damaged while I do that and then it's really helpful to use some tweezers here to pull the ribbon cables back through this little hole. Okay, so now it's time to install the keyboard here again. That's really easy to do. And then of course also here the camera. Make sure that you install the ribbon cable in the right orientation. So uh, you just saw how that works here in the picture. So and then we can put the camera back into this little uh, plastic bracket here and in order for it to stay in place uh, first I'm pushing it in there I'm making sure that I'm just pressing on this big connector otherwise you, you may really easily damage some of the components on the board and then I'm adding some more hot glue so that it stays in place again okay so now put this bracket back into position make sure you don't pinch the uh, ribbon cables uh, in a funny way so that they break and then I'm pressing it on and I had some uh, glue, some of that old glue that was actually covering here the uh, hole for the charging LEDs, so I'm making sure those are all open. I'm scraping here the old glue off. Now we're already at the point where we install this bracket here. I'm starting out by the JBL logo. That seems to be the best way to start to get it really in there. Then I'm working my way around 
Uh, also here around the uh, charging port, of course, put that, uh, put the cover through the hole, then over the camera. In case you, it doesn't uh, stick for you good enough, then I suggest you add some glue there, and by the uh, keyboard. Uh, but for me, it was it was still okay, so it kind of holds in position nicely. You can't really notice. Then, in case you found this little rubber uh, plug here, this is where that goes. So uh, right underneath the charging port is a little hole. You plug that in there. And then we have uh, four screws on each side that we need to install here on the very outside. And those are those uh, longer black screws that go in here. So put those in. You should have eight screws total. And then the uh, plastic rings. Uh, make sure you put them in on the right orientation here, especially where the button is here. And then there's the four small silver screws. And then I'm installing the rubber rings again. They do have a specific orientation that you have to install those. Uh, so you make sure you do uh, that right. Here I'm just pressing the rubber rings back on, but it's actually better to use a little bit of glue uh, underneath there to uh, keep it in place better. Okay, so then time to have a final check and plugging it in. And the uh, charging LEDs are starting to blink again, so everything seems to work right. And also powers up still, so uh, perfect, we replaced the battery. Uh, yeah, this is it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any more questions or comments, then leave a message below and don't forget to like and subscribe.